Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. <laughs> so, for what we have been waiting for, may we now call on His Eminence, Luis Antonio G. Cardinal Tagle, Archbishop of Manila. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, we call this press conference in order to officially announce the uh, itinerary in the schedule of the apostolic, the pastoral visit of Pope Francis to the Philippines on January 15th to the 19th, 2015. On the 15th of January, the Holy Father will depart from Colombo, Sri Lanka for Manila at 9 in the morning, Sri Lanka time, and will arrive in the Philippines at 5.45 in the afternoon at Villamore Air Base, where there will be a simple official welcome. On the 16th of January, that's a Friday, at 9.15 in the morning, there will be the welcome ceremony at the Presidential Palace, Malacanang, and the courtesy visit to the President. At 10.15 in the morning, the Holy Father will have a meeting with the government authorities and the diplomatic corps at the Rizal Ceremonial Hall of the Presidential Palace. At 11.15 in the morning, the Holy Father will celebrate Holy Mass with the bishops, priests, women, and men religious at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, or Manila Cathedral. And at 5.30 in the afternoon, the Holy Father will have a meeting or encounter with families. It will be held at the Mall of Asia Arena. The following day, the 17th of January, at 8.15 in the morning, the Holy Father will depart by plane from Manila for Tacloban. At 9.30, in the morning, he and his entourage are expected to arrive at the airport in Tacloban. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the Holy Father will preside at a concelebrated mass near the Tacloban International Airport. At 12.45 in the afternoon, the Holy Father will have lunch with some of the survivors of the Typhoon Yolanda at the Archbishop's residence in Palo. At 3 o'clock, the Holy Father will preside at the blessing of the Pope Francis Center for the Poor in Palo uh, Leyte. At 3.30, the Holy Father will meet with the priests, the women and men religious, seminarians, and families of the survivors at the Cathedral of Palo. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he departs by plane for Manila, expected to arrive at Villamore Air Base at 6.15. On Sunday, the 18th of January, 2015, at 9.45 in the morning, the Holy Father will have a short meeting with leaders, the leaders of various religions. This is the inter-religious uh, aspect of his visit. It will be held at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. At 10.30 in the morning, the Holy Father will have a meeting, an encounter with the youth at the sports field of the same university, University of Santo Tomas. At 3.30 in the afternoon, the Holy Father will preside at the Holy Mass to be held at the Rizal Park in Manila. The following day, the 19th of uh, January, 9.45, there'll be a simple leave-taking ceremony at the Presidential Pavilion of the Villamore Air Base in Manila. At 10 o'clock, the plane is expected to depart from Manila for Rome, and the expected uh, uh, arrival in Rome is at 5.45 in uh, Ciampino Airport, Roman time, 5.45 in the afternoon. 
5.40 in the afternoon, Rome time, of the same day. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. We now call on Bishop Milo Hubert Vergara of the Diocese of Pasig, also the head of the Episcopal Commission on Social Communications, and the head of the media committee for the papal visit. Um, he will give us very important announcements on the media. Bishop Milo. So on behalf of uh, the committees preparing for the papal visit, I would like to thank you all for coming to this press conference and assisting us in this announcement to the public, the official itinerary of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his, his, in his first historic visit to our country. Our panelists will be giving messages on the official announcement, but more details will emerge in the coming days in the subsequent briefings of uh, press conferences with resource persons for various different venues and other aspects of the preparations. The press conference will be announced through the media committee. May I also invite the public to log on to our official PayPal website, www.papalvisit.ph. From there, we can get the latest news and updates regarding the preparations for the papal visit. Also, information regarding the Holy Father and some background information regarding the places where the Holy Father would go, especially Tacloban and Palo, and his activities leading to his historic trip in the Philippines this coming January 2015. For all our partners in media, and this is very important, I would like to inform you that media accreditation will officially start on November 17, 2014, online only, and on November 24, 2014, at the Papal Visit GHQ General Headquarters at the Knights of Columbus Building on General Luna Street in Tramuros. So again, just log on to our website and the application period will last until December 8, 2014. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Milo. We now call on our panelists for their messages. First, we call on Honorable Executive Secretary Paquito Ochoa of the Office of the President. Yep. Good evening, Your Eminence, Your Excellencies, mga kasama dito. On behalf of the, uh, the President, President Benigno S. Aquino III, may I express the government's eagerness to warmly welcome His Holiness the Pope, or Pope Francis, on his forthcoming visit to the Philippines this January. The whole country is looking forward to this event, and in line with this, the President uh, signed in, November, in September of this year Memorandum Circular Number 72, which created the Papal Visit National Organizing Committee, that is on the government's part. He has likewise directed all government, all concerned government agencies to extend assistance to the church in preparation for the post visit. As a matter of fact, uh, you may, not everybody, for your information, we have started uh, since six months ago, I think, uh, meet, a meeting uh, uh, in preparation for the post visit. Pope Francis will be here not only as the leader of the Roman Catholic faith, but as you know, he is also the head of state of the Vatican, and as such, His Holiness will be extended all the courtesies provided to visiting heads of state. And that is the reason why he will be visiting the palace uh, also. We know that the whole nation is excited about this visit, and we assure everyone that all efforts will be made to make the Pope's visit meaningful and memorable for our people. We are grateful for the support of those in the public and private sector who are all pitching in to ensure that the visit of His Holiness is organized and peaceful, and we likewise call on everyone in their own way to cooperate and help out with the preparations that will be undertaken for this visit. We also appeal to our citizens to be patient as we implement measures that are necessary for this historic event. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Secretary Ochoa. <clears throat> we now call on His Excellency Archbishop Giuseppe Pinto, Apostolic Nuncio in the Philippines. Distinguished representatives of television and radio broadcasters, of newspapers and magazines, and of internet communications. Dear journalists, our encounter this evening opens the doors, so to speak, for the apostolic visit of Pope Francis, already announced for January of next year, from 15th to the 19th, and anticipates it with the publication of the program. His Eminence Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagli, Archbishop of Manila, and the government officials, and after them other representatives of the various organizing commissions, will illustrate the main aspects of the visit, the place involved, and the principal theme, mercy and compassion. We shall share the experience of Pentecost with the people of Jerusalem, when the apostles went out from the cenacle and announced with joy and the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Lord and the Savior. Then they went throughout the world establishing the first Christian communities. This will happen in Manila and in Tacloban and in Palo with the physical presence of the successor of Peter. Pope Francis who constantly invites the faithful to renew their personal relationship with Christ. Pope Francis dreams of a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church's customs, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitable channeled for the evangeliz evangelization of today's world rather than for air preservation. This is taken from the exhortation Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel or the joy of the evangelization. He will go to the geographical and existential peripheries. We will listen to him as if he were speaking to each one of us. Every tear, every sorrow, and every hope he will make his own. The exhortation of the expectation of the Filipino people calls to him and they will come. May we experience an intense spiritual preparation for this encounter with grace and mercy. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Thank you very much, um, Archbishop Pinto. Um, we now call on uh, my Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> Special plug. <laughs> uh, His Eminence, Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle. Uh, so, good evening again to everyone. Magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. So, the uh, announcement of the program of His Holiness Pope Francis's pastoral visit to the Philippines has just been made. We cannot contain our joy, and we want the whole Filipino nation to know of this good news. The pastoral visit of Pope Francis will surely bring much blessing to all of us, especially to the poor, the survivors of calamities, both natural and human cost, and the victims of different types of injustice. The concern and solidarity of Jesus the Good Shepherd will be palpable in the person and presence of Pope Francis. With him, let us share Jesus' love to all. The Pope's visit also calls us to personal and societal responsibility. As disciples of Jesus Christ, driven by the Holy Spirit, we will be challenged to reach out with love to the neglected and abandoned to help heal the wounds inflicted on children, women, and families, to respect neighbors who differ from us, to form the youth in responsible freedom, to value life and creation, and to imbue our culture and society with mercy and compassion. With him, let us spread the gospel of hope with joy. 
Our excitement needs to be purified and strengthened by constantly listening to the Word of God, by frequently participating in the Eucharist, by sincerely repenting of our sins, and by habitually doing acts of justice and love. With Pope Francis's pastoral visit, God's mercy and compassion will embrace all Filipinos. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, Paul Archbishop Cardinal. Uh, although he cannot be here, Archbishop Socrates Villegas of Linga and Dagupan, President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, has given uh, us his message, and it will be read by Father Marvin Mejia, Secretary General of the CBCP. CBCP President press a statement on the announcement of the final itinerary of the papal visit. Today, our official joy begins. We have had this secret joy in our hearts since the first news of a visit by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, came out. But today, we announce it to you and to the world. Pope Francis is bringing the joy of the gospel personally to us on the five special days in January that we have officially announced. The days leading up to January 15 will be busy, if not frenzied, for people in the church and in government who are tasked with preparing for the events. There will be great interest and curiosity about the who, the what, the how, and the why of the visit. There will be an appetite for the minutiae, the littlest, and even the most trivial things, what the Pope will eat, what he will drink, etc. But as we, the bishop, said in our pastoral letter last July, the visit of Pope Francis carries a message of pastoral love, mercy, and compassion. And it is through the understanding and living out of this message that the grace of joy will flow. I invite you all, my fellow Filipinos, to extend a hearty and warm welcome to our Pope. But most importantly, let us open our hearts to the message that he will bring. And even now, extend the love, mercy, compassion, and kindness that he practices to one another. That he may find in our country a blessed, kind, and grateful people. Let us all work and act together to make his visit a moment of grace for us and our country. When Pope Francis comes, he will show us the face of God. When the Pope sees us Filipinos, may he see the living God in us. Most Reverend Socrates B. Villegas, Archbishop of Lingay and Dagupan, President, Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Good evening. Thank you, Father Marvin. Uh, Archbishop John Du of Palo can on, cannot also join us tonight, but he has asked uh, Monsignor Bern, Bernard Pantin to read his message for us. Message of Archbishop Jandu on the pastoral visit of the Holy Father to the Archdiocese of Palo. May Almighty God be praised. The news confirming the Holy Father's coming in January fills us with gratitude to God who has given us this very special favor. The decision of Pope Francis to come to the Philippines and especially to visit the Archdiocese of Palo to show solidarity with the victims of the Yolanda catastrophe was very unexpected, but is also very much welcome. Let us all pray that this pastoral visit of the Supreme Shepherd of the Universal Church may bring hope and encouragement, unity and peace to all, so that we may rise from the destruction unleashed by the fury of Yolanda to a better and brighter tomorrow. We are trying our best to prepare for this great event 
and are very thankful for the help and support of our leaders in the church and in government, and of many groups and individuals. Manila expects millions of pilgrims. We too in Leyte are expecting hundreds of thousands to join us. We are preparing for them as well. Let us prepare for this together without bickering and without undermining each other's participation. The Philippines is now united in praying fervently for Pope Francis. Let us also contribute our own goodwill and efforts in ensuring that the apostolic visit of the Roman Pontiff may not be marred by any untoward incident and that it may truly be a time of grace for our country and for everyone. Many dioceses in the Visayas suffered much, especially due to the Bohol earthquake and the super typhoon Yolanda. As we suffered together, so should we also rejoice together. For in faith, we understand that the Lord in his mercy and compassion does not only try us and test our faith, he also continues to provide us with good things through Christ our Lord. Signed, John F. Du, Archbishop of Palo. Thank you very much, Monsignor Pantin. Um, we now call on Honorable Secretary Arminio Coloma of the PCOO. Good evening. The government is pleased to work with the church in providing a seamless coverage of the apostolic and state visit of His Holiness Pope Francis on January 15 to 19, 2015. For the past few months, our Committee on Information and Media, that is chaired by Bishop Milo here, has been meeting with various media organizations for the purpose of laying the groundwork for media coverage. The Church, through the CBCP, and the government, through my office and Radio Television Malacanang, or RTVM, will serve as the joint host broadcasters that will coordinate and oversee the pooling of facilities and efforts of all media organizations that will participate in covering this historic event. We are expecting more than 1,000 uh, journalists from, from the Philippines and uh, overseas to cover this event. And for this purpose, we are establishing an international media center at the tent of the Manila Hotel in Rizal Park. We wish to thank the Manila Hotel Corporation for making this facility available. The Vatican Media Center will be located at the Diamond Hotel. And there will also be a field press center in Tacloban. Our committee is prepared to do all that is needed to ensure that the Filipino people and all the faithful will obtain a complete accurate and timely information on the visit of Pope Francis. Thank you. So that is of great concern for the media. Thank you very much, Secretary Coloma. We now call on His Excellency Ambassador Marciano Painor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We on the government side, uh, <clears throat> as uh, announced by uh, Secretary Paquito Ochoa, are ready to support uh, <clears throat> all the efforts made by the church in this uh, very historic visit. Uh, there's just one thing that we'd like to request from the media, and that is if they could uh, inform our brethren to hold themselves uh, when they see the Pope. Because uh, this was our biggest problem when St. Pope John Paul II came in 1995. And uh, his schedule, uh, we could not keep his uh, schedule because the roads were blocked. Uh, this is what we are now calling a people surge. And we would like to request if, uh, in the course of informing the Filipino people about the Pope's visit, that if you could also request them to uh, cooperate with all of us in ensuring the safety of His Holiness, um, and ensuring that uh, his stay here is uh, memorable. I am sure it will be very, very memorable, but let it be in a positive way rather than in a negative way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Pinor. So uh, we have uh, listened to all the panelists. 
We now open the floor for your questions. Now, uh, those who would like to ask questions, please raise your hand. Then, upon acknowledgement, identify yourself and the organization that you are representing. Okay, here first and then there. Any of the gentlemen may answer. I'm Chino Gaston from GMA7. Uh, much has been said about um, the security of the Pope, and we would want to know whether the initial plans of not using any protective um, uh, barrier when he um, travels uh, throughout Manila and Tutakloban will still be uh, implemented. So will the Pope Mobile be bulletproof? Because uh, if we recall last time we had this conference, uh, we had this uh, sort of meeting in preparation for the papal visit, the Pope was said to have requested that he was not going to use any uh, barrier when he goes to Manila. Um, ambassador? <laughs> so we put ambassador on the, or secretary uh, let's, let's put it this way. No? The, it's a matter of uh, security. So probably if I may suggest to everybody, then let's just not be too detailed on that. Uh, precisely, we, we want to be, uh, uh, we might, we want to make sure that the Pope is safe. So, uh, it's the, you know, in the interest of this country that uh, we keep it that way. So, can we not, can we just defer na lang muna yung pag-discuss about the details on how he will travel and, uh, you know. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, I'd say on the government's part, uh, 95% of its preparation is all about security. If I can, uh, let's leave it at that, diba? So, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, I think there's somebody over there who raised her hand earlier. Yes, Simon. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Hi, good evening. I'm Simone Orendine. I'm here for Catholic News Service. Um, can someone on the panel tell me, and I think that might be Cardinal Tagli, um, about the question of the people in Tacloban and Palo being moved. Uh, we were, a lot of us were there this weekend, last weekend for the commemorations, and there was talk of moving some residents for in preparation, uh, particularly by the airport, that venue where the Pope will be saying mass. What is the update on that? Thank you. Uh, from the very beginning, when we were pre making preparations for the visit in Tacloban, we had already been uh, requested not to unnecessarily move people around. But even before the Pope's uh, visit was announced, or even before we knew about the Pope's visit, there had already been movements within the area because of uh, Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, so any kind of uh, movement now is part of that. In fact, uh, actually, it, it, it had slowed down. And we had to alter some of our plans to respect that particular request that uh, as few numbers of people as possible should be um, dislocated on account of the Pope's visit. So whatever movements there are now ha are movements which were planned way before and it's part of the rehabilitation plan of government. Okay, so then we can, we can definitively say that the, the moving or transferring of any mm -hmm. residents is not related to the papal visit. That's correct. Okay. okay, thank you. So just to remind you, uh, one follow-up question only. Yes. Uh, I'm Joe Torres from the Union of Catholic Asian News. Uh, first question is a follow-up to the security issue. You, uh, Mr. Ochoa, you said that 
95% of the preparations is uh, concerned with security. So are there threats to the Pope? Are there rumors? Are there, is there anything about... Uh, earlier there were reports about ISIS and all these things. Uh, do you have any intelligence reports about threats to the life of the Pope? We don't... The same, no? We don't want to pronounce anything about uh, those matters. These are matters of national security, nga, and diba? So I hope you understand that we don't go into details about this. Uh, we cannot uh, go any further than saying that we will secure the Pope, definitely. Of course, it's our duty, it's uh, our honor as well uh, to provide that kind of security that uh, will. That the Pope, that to make sure that the Pope is safe. Not only the Pope, ah, of course, we are also concerned with our uh, countrymen. You know, I'm a devotee of the Nazarene. I always, I am always, I, I always proud to say that. And you, you know how the celebration of the Feast of the Nazarene is in Quiapo. And that's how we Filipinos uh, uh, behave or <laughs> celebrate uh, our religion, diba? So, Medyo kinakabahan kami ng konti kung gano'n ang magiging uh, behavior natin when the Pope comes. Diba? If you were just to compare, imagine mo, the Black Nazarene is just is an image. Here is a living image of God. So, <laughs> so imagine how the... So yun yung aming concern. Not only for the Pope's uh, safety, but also the safety of our countrymen. Diba? So, kaya yun yung, yun yung ibig ko sabihin dun sa... Maraming bagay na pinag-uusapan about security. Security, okay? Thank you. Uh, next, I have a, one more question. Yeah, uh, to Cardinal Tagli and the Apostolic Nonshu. Uh, last month, I interviewed the leader of the MILF, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. They said that they would send a letter to the Vatican through the Apostolic Nonsiture to request. Uh, the Pope to talk about the peace process, peace in Mindanao, and the whole, uh, all these things all about peace, especially in Mindanao. Did you receive any letter or any information that they were able to send that letter to the Vatican? I, I myself uh, did not receive any letter, but I guess even without the letter, the Pope, everywhere he goes, talks about peace, especially uh, the, the role of religions in fostering peace. I'm sure that theme will come up in uh, one of his discourses or homilies. Um, okay, I think uh, over there, Oliver, and then... Uh, then. Uh, Oliver Tevez from the Associated Press. Uh, it was mentioned earlier by uh, Bishop or Archbishop uh, Jandu that uh, they expect millions in Manila and hundreds of thousands in Leyte. Uh, what is the uh, more or less uh, figure, crowd figure that the crowd size that the government and the church uh, is uh, preparing for? And is the church uh, calling on Filipinos to come to Manila or go to Tacloban and Palo for this visit? In terms of, uh, I don't think we have a, a target figure. No. Uh, uh, we, uh, yeah, at least uh, the part of the church. We, we, in our meetings, we are not uh, giving some sort of a, of, a, of a figure that we aim to reach. But uh, definitely, uh, people are being asked to prepare spiritually for the visit. Even those who could not come to Palo, to Tacloban, or to uh, the events in Manila, they can follow the events in their homes through radio, through you, uh, the media coverage. No? Uh, but of course, in, in some of the functions, for example, in uh, the... Uh, Hello. Yeah. Uh, in some of the functions related to the church, like, like for example, the, uh, the, the, the meeting with families, no? uh, the different dioceses have been asked 
to uh, send some delegates. And there are fixed numbers so that uh, we do not uh, exceed what is humanly and uh, and uh, uh, humanly possible uh, to be held in uh, the, the, the group that could be contained in uh, the places where those encounters could be held. Um, uh, how about on the government side? What crowd size is, uh, is expected and you are preparing for? Government side, yes. You can just imagine uh, if you talk about Luneta, I think Everybody knows uh, it can accommodate millions. So we expect uh, that uh, Luneta will be, will be fully occupied. And not only that part, but also the roads uh, leading to Luneta will be, I think, crowded. So we, we expect a lot of people. In, in the Visayas, meaning in Tacloban and in Palo, we also expect uh, a lot of people because uh, these are also populated areas and a lot of devotees. So we don't also have any exact figure, but uh, we estimate and we are preparing based on those estimates that uh, we have. Thank you. Okay. Sir, good, good, after, good evening for JC Kainan from Sunster Online. We all know that the Pope is a great symbol of simplicity. May we just know where will he stay in his five day, during his five-day visit? Where will be his official residence here in Manila? Where will the Pope stay? Sabi na nga ni Secretary Ochoa, yung uh, mga detalye ay ano, no? Uh, uh, uh. Pero, May matutulugan siya. <laughs> so, abangan. Um, follow up? No follow up? Okay, over there first and then over here. Uh, good evening, Your Excellencies, Your Eminence. I am Patrick Pineda from OBS Philippines. Um, we would just like to ask from the side of the government, because the Pope will be arriving on Thursday and Friday. These are work days. Are there any intentions from the government to declare these days a holiday? Because, practically speaking, roads will be closed. Sa dami po ng tao. Malalagay na naman ako sa Facebook niyan. Actually, seriously, we are considering that. Uh, that's also part, again, of uh, the security preparations. If it will help, definitely, then we will, we will do that. But at the moment, there's no, there's no uh, decision yet uh, if, if we will do that. And follow up also on the government side. <laughs> is the government ready for the Pope of Surprises? Knowing that this Pope is very spontaneous, especially with the people crowding around him. Kaya nga wala kami masyado masabi sa inyo ngayon. <laughs> we are preparing for everything, uh, including the surprises that you're talking about. Thank you, Secretary. So, there will be no surprises for the government. Okay, uh, over this side, Paterno first. Huh? Hello, Paterno S. Makel from Rappler.com. My question is for Cardinal Tagle. Uh, there's a concern about the length of the Pope's stay in the Visayas because he said his main objective is to visit the typhoon and earthquake survivors in the Visayas. But uh, based on the itinerary, I think he's spending more time in Manila. So how do we reconcile that with his main objective of reaching out to the survivors? You know, uh, yes, at least one full day is uh, to be devoted to uh, uh, Tacloban and Palo. If we, will, if we want to be really strict about it, then he should also go to Palawan, <laughs> Cebu, Antique, Bohol, and everything. And so we will ask the Holy Father to stay for half a year. <laughs> and, uh, you know. And so uh, uh, in much of these papal visits, you know, uh, the symbolism matters a lot. 
the personal uh, encounters with people. And even if uh, he will spend like two full days in Manila, uh, the encounters in Manila would include also people who are suffering and uh, who have experienced other forms of disasters in life. And uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the organizers and the planners made sure that uh, that type of the quality of an encounter will happen. And just a follow up, in the Synod you talked about the situation of Filipino families, Asian families. Uh, you had also had uh, your own conversations with Pope Francis. How much do you think does Pope Francis know the Philippines? Uh, I do not know. I will ask. How <laughs> <laughs> but what, what has he told you about our country? That he wants to visit the country. <laughs> you know, and that, uh, uh, the, the, that he ad really admires the faith and the resilience of the, the survivors. I think uh, he will come to uh, bring a message of solidarity and hope. But I'm also quite certain that he uh, would want to uh, imbibe, to be edified, to be inspired by the faith of the simple people. Okay. So, uh, Dana? Dana Batnag from GG Press. Uh, Cardinal Tagle, uh, among the events mentioned, are all of these open to the public or are there only particular events where, that anyone can go to and some which will be closed to the public in general? The, uh, the public masses, no, those are open to the, the public. You know, like the one in uh, Tacloban, the one in... Uh, Hello. In uh, yeah, the Luneta. In, um, now, but in but in some of the uh, events, uh, uh, like uh, the the encounter with the families, because of the constraint also of the the venues, then uh, representatives uh, uh, from different sectors or provinces uh, will be accommodated. A certain number of uh, of uh, of uh, delegates. And to Ambassador Painor. Um, can you just distinguish between a pastoral visit and the regular uh, head of state visit? Uh, the regular head of state uh, visit uh, carries with it certain uh, uh, ceremonial musts. Uh, one among which is uh, an ar the arrival ceremony. In, in the visit of uh, St. Pope John Paul, last time it was just a pastoral visit and a call on the president. This time um, it is both a state and pastoral visit with cer ceremonies minimized. So when uh, His Holiness goes to Malacanang, there will be arrival honors. And uh, there will be a bilateral uh, talk between the two leaders. So these uh, partake of the ceremonial uh, visit. And then he will in also address uh, government officials who will be gathered in Malacanang. Uh, this is also a time when the president breaks protocol and meets with His Holiness at the airport and sends him off very much like uh, 1995. Okay, no follow-up now. Um, we will have occasions for more press briefings in the future. In fact, maybe a regular weekly press briefing on the events and also on the people in charge of the preparations. So now we will have time for just three more, four more questions, just four more questions. So um, please. Good evening, Dennis Amito from Bombo Radio Philippines. Are we going to use English or in a Latin for the mass or uh, direct translation for Tagalog? It has been uh, specified to us uh, that the Holy Father will be delivering his speeches in English. So we are blessed because uh, we understand English, so he will be speaking. But of course, because he is a Pope of surprises, there might be spontaneous uh, 
uh, not Visayan, Italian or Spanish interjections. We do not know, but, uh, but the masses, um, I think, um, uh, the masses will be in Latin, right? Latin, but there, there will be uh, a res the responses will be in English, you know, and uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, for Executive Secretary Ochoa, sir, um, magkakaroon ba tayo ng uh, signal jammers? Because uh, kami as media practitioners, kailangan namin yung signal. Baka dun sa mismong araw po ng coverage, eh, eh, i-jam yung signal ng ating uh, telcos. And don't worry, we will make sure that you'll be able to perform your jobs. <laughs> Thank you, sir. They're getting nervous. <laughs> Okay, so uh, at that end, no more, no more questions. Yes. Good evening, po. Sweden Valado from PTV4. Uh, anyone can answer my question, um, sir? Ato ba ay coincidence lang that the schedule of the Pope's visit uh, happens 20 years later after Pope John Paul II's visit? Uh, yes. Uh, really uh, uh, a pleasant coincidence. You know, it was uh, in, in the organizers' mind, the Pope's mind, the Vatican officials, and the, the counterparts here. You know, the date was chosen uh, because it was uh, the most uh, feasible for all. And then, lo and behold, when we checked the records, it, was, it would mark the 20th anniversary of the uh, coming of Pope uh, Saint Pope John Paul II. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a coincidence, but very pleasant. Yes, Your Eminence. Uh, last time that uh, Pope John Paul visited the Philippines, uh, his encounter with the youth happened at the University of Santo Tomas, and Pope Francis will also do it at UST. Yes. Uh, bakit po, sir? Bakit hindi? Bakit hindi? Well, the, uh, the University of Santo Tomas is the Pontifical Royal uh, uh, Catholic University. You know? And so by tradition and history, so from Pope Paul VI, and then uh, twice with Paul, uh, Pope uh, John Paul II, you know, the, an encounter with the youth happens in this uh, um, university setting. And of course, the UST uh, occupies this uh, special place. Okay, so I will not comment on that, being a Tomasian myself. <laughs> So, uh, last two questions. Last three, okay, Ricky. Uh, good evening, I'm Ricky Velasco from ABS-CBN, DZMM, Radio Patrol. I would like to ask uh, from any one of you that uh, on protocol, normally uh, the Pope arrives uh, by plane on board an Alitalia flight. Uh, uh, coming uh, from Rome, but in this case he will be coming from Sri Lanka and uh, by tradition as I do know uh, Whenever the Pope leaves the country where he came from he leaves via the flag carrier of that country so How will it be since he's coming in from Sri Lanka? Will he be coming in? taking in the Alitalia flight or the Sri Lanka fly, flag carrier and going out. Will he be riding the Philippine flag carrier? Uh, by tradition, uh, Alitalia flies uh, His Holiness to the country, to the first country that uh, the Pope visits. Uh, if he is to go to another uh, uh, country, visits another country, the flag carrier of the last one brings him there. Mm -hmm. So by that tradition, uh, Air Sri Lanka will uh, bring His Holiness here. Philippine Airlines will bring him back to Rome. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, uh, no, um, him first and then the last question. Good evening, um, Julino Bagaypo from o OBS. 
um, in Korea for the Asian Youth Day, uh, Pope um, Pope Francis was very was very happy to be with the youth. My question is: Is the government considering cancellation of classes during that day, where he's going to have a celebration of the Mass and his visit here in Manila? Because when I remember back in 1995, where I participated for the World Youth Day, Manila classes were canceled during that time. So I'm not sure if you if you're going to cancel that this year. <laughs> Sunday. That's a Sunday. That's a Sunday. 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 How about the, the one in Ateneo? Uh, sorry, in, uh, in Santa Tomas, University of Santa Tomas Sunday. business. Sunday. Ah, it's also Sunday. Okay. 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 All right, thank you. <laughs> sorry, students. <laughs> Not listening. Uh, last question. Yes. Good evening, Joby de la Cruz from Business Mirror for Cardinal Table. Uh, who will make Pope Francis Pope mobile? <laughs> who will make Pope Francis mobile? Secret. <laughs> We That's cannot, the name of a new company, Secret yes. Company. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you cannot know everything tonight. So there will be occasions uh, further down the road to the Pope's visit that you can know all of this. It will unfold. It will no longer be a mystery. Last. Okay. <laughs> uh, originally, the Pope was scheduled to come to the Philippines in 2016 for the Eucharistic Congress. It was before Yolanda, it was supposed to be that he's coming for the Eucharistic Congress in January 2016. So will he still come back in 2016 for the Eucharistic Congress? Secret. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> no, we really do not know. No, we do not know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the hour is late, so thank you very much to our distinguished panelists and also to the members of the media.